This Week in IT. Microsoft finally releases the Windows 11 2024 update, the first version of the OS to include major architectural changes in two years. Plus, there's a slew of announcements for Copilot Plus PCs. So stay tuned to find out all the latest. Welcome to This Week in IT, the show where I talk about everything connected to Windows, Azure, and Microsoft 365. But before I get started, I've got a quick favour to ask you. About 90% of the people who watched last week's video weren't subscribed to the channel. Now, as we go live today, we're on about 8,440 subscribers, and I'd love it if we could push that up to 8,500 this week. So if you'd like to see this weekly news update from Petri.com, then please subscribe to the channel, and don't forget to hit the bell notification to make sure you don't miss out on the latest uploads. First, a little bit of history about this update. This update is the first update for Windows 11 that includes major architectural changes for two years. It involves performing what Microsoft terms an OS swap. So essentially it reinstalls the entire operating system on top of the version of Windows 11 that you're currently running. The 2023 update was essentially just pushing some updates on top of the existing version of the OS that you were already running. So the 2022 update and it just pushed those updates using the normal servicing mechanisms. So what we're getting this time around this year with this update is something a little bit different. This update has a weird history because it has already been made available for devices known as Copilot Plus PCs. Now these were the devices that Microsoft announced were coming to market. I think it was back in June, something like that. Its own Surface devices and some Copilot Plus PCs that were announced by some third-party manufacturers as well. And this update has already been made available for them because there's a major update here to the ARM platform or Windows on ARM as it's known. So these devices have already been issued with this update because they came with it pre-installed essentially, but without a lot of the end user features that we're now seeing rolled out. So all devices are now able to install the 2024 update. And those devices that already had it because they came with it pre-installed are getting another update, as I understand, to bring all of these features that come with the complete package to those devices as well. So this is a really complicated backstory with this update. Let's talk about the architectural stuff and some of the things for IT pros before we get into the end user changes, the things that most people are going to see once they get this update. Now, this is the first update that includes the capability of Windows Update checkpoint updates. We've talked about that on this channel before. This is the first version of Windows that officially supports them. This technology is not going to be made available for Windows 10 devices. It's going to be exclusive for Windows 11 and Windows Server 2025. And essentially it allows Microsoft to roll out much smaller update packages every month to make the update process much more efficient in terms of, of course, network bandwidth and the amount of disk space that these updates are ultimately going to take up. Now, the other thing that is potentially coming with this update, this was leaked on Twitter earlier this year. It's been widely reported in the press, but it's not been officially confirmed by Microsoft, is that this version of Windows 11 is going to support hot patching. Now, we know that this is coming to the on-premises version of Windows Server with that release that should be later this year. And this has been something available in the cloud if you were using the Azure edition of Windows Server with Azure Arc. You had the capability of using uh, this hot patch feature, which essentially allows you to apply some selected security patches to the operating system code as it's running in memory without you having to reboot the device. So it's not that you will never have to reboot Windows, but it should reduce the number of reboots considerably. It would make absolute sense if Microsoft brought this to the client version of Windows. I don't see why they would not do that. There's also been a lot of talk 
talk about the support for Rust in the Windows kernel. Microsoft has been you know, swapping some of that uh, legacy code out for Rust. And if you've got an older Windows and ARM device running one of the Microsoft SQ chips or something like this, this is the first update where you're going to get access to the new emulation technology, the new Prism emulation that essentially allows you to run x86 apps on ARM devices. So those older ARM devices should get a significant performance boost when they get this update. A couple of things for IT pros here that is significant. Sudo, a, it's not a direct port from the Linux, you know, the famous Linux version of Sudo, which is where this idea comes from. But Sudo is, as our Windows version of Sudo, it's going to be available as part of this update and Windows Server 2025. And essentially, this is a much better option than using the run as command line. It allows you to essentially run processes with elevated privileges. And there are going to be various options as part of this new command line tool that will allow you to do that. So that's great news for system administrators. Another thing that's going to be turned on by default in this build is protection for the local security authority. So only trusted code will be able to access the local security authority once that is enabled as part of this update. A couple of standard support things here. So this is the first version of Windows that's going to support the Wi-Fi 7 standard. Of course, you will need compatible hardware to make use of that, but that brings considerable improvement to the speed of Wi-Fi. So this is a major update to the USB 4 standard, and this is the first version of Windows where you're going to be able to get up to 80 gigabytes per second speed over USB. Okay, that's all the really juicy stuff for architecture and IT pros, but what is going to be the effect for end users? Let's start with File Explorer. There are going to be a few changes here. They're all relatively minor. Users will now be able to create 7-zip and tar archives directly from File Explorer. There's an updated context menu across the operating system. So common actions like copy, paste and cut are going to be at the very top with much larger buttons that also include text labels. You'll also be able to drag and drop files using the breadcrumbs at the top of File Explorer, which should come in handy. And there's now added support for viewing and adding metadata to PNG files. Microsoft is replacing the old battery saver mode with a new mode called Energy Saver. It's going to apply to both PCs that have a battery and those that do not. So this is going to help you save electricity, even if you're you know, plugged into a socket and it's not a, a notebook or a laptop, for instance. And Microsoft says this is going to help to reduce power consumption across the board. So we'll see how that works out. And of course, if you've got a notebook, it should further help you extend battery life. There's now a unified Teams experience. So you'll be able to seamlessly switch between work, school and personal accounts using these same application. There's also a new Windows protected print mode coming that when it's enabled will allow your device to exclusively print to devices that are Moprio certified. So these devices don't require any kind of third party driver and they just work out of the box. And the idea of this is to basically help reduce the security issues that Microsoft has experienced with printer drivers over the years. So organizations will be able to enable this, of course, if you've got compatible hardware. Microsoft is extending BitLocker drive encryption to clean installs for everyone, regardless of whether you're running the home or pro edition of Windows 11, and you don't need to have a Microsoft account in order to enable it. Windows Copilot, of course, we've seen uh, as an app in Windows for some time now. This version of Windows brings Copilot as a true PWA. So you'll be able to move it around the screen, dock it, you know, stack it with other windows, just like you would with any other application. So that's going to bring you a little bit more flexibility with Windows Copilot. This is also the version of Windows that has the controversial Windows recall. Now that's only going to be made available at this point for people who are in the
the Insider program in preview, I believe. So there's still some testing involved. I think a few weeks ago we mentioned that Windows Recall has been kind of you know, relaunched by Microsoft with some new security features, you know, which debatable whether they're really new or not. But just some new protections to make people feel a bit more fuzzy and warm about how the whole thing works. So that will be coming to users with appropriate hardware to the Windows 11 2024 update at some point next year, I imagine. There have also been a whole load of updates to Windows Studio effects and to AI features in some of the inbox apps. Again, you have to have appropriate hardware. So what that really means at this stage is an ARM processor with an MPU. I'm not gonna go through all of those enhancements because I know that applies to a relatively few number of people at this stage, but just be aware there's a whole load of improvements and additions coming there. In a separate announcement, Microsoft said there's a whole load of AI things coming to Copilot plus PCs at some point in the future. They're not necessarily coming right now as part of this update, but there are some intriguing things that could persuade you that at some point you need to update to one of these new devices. The thing that really struck me out of the three main features that they're really announcing here is improved search. Now, I know that people have their you know, qualms with search in Windows. I think it's actually not bad. Uh, it's certainly got a lot better over the years. But one feature they're intending to bring to these new devices is the ability to search for things by just describing the file or the, you know whatever it is that you're looking for without actually having to know its name. So for instance, if you had a picture of a dog that you were looking for, you could say, you know, show me pictures with with brown dogs or something like that. And I think that's something that could become quite invaluable if they can get that right and if it works quite effectively because very often I don't know the name of the file that I'm looking for necessarily but I know there's something in it that maybe I can describe and if search could surface that I think that is really useful. One of the things we all spend a lot of time doing is just trying to find the things that we need to work with so if Microsoft can get that right I'd really love to have one of those devices and that would make me think mm, maybe I do need to upgrade. Another intriguing feature is something that Microsoft is calling click to do. So this is essentially an overlay that will offer you to do various things depending on what, it, what Copilot can see on the screen. Now Microsoft says you don't have to worry about you know, your data being stored somewhere or the data that you can see on your screen being used for training. You know, if you trust Microsoft with those words, that is not going to happen. But the idea with this is so that you don't have to context switch between applications to do something necessarily. So I don't know, it might offer you to remove a background from a picture. It might offer you to translate something. It might, you know, offer you something, you know, depending on what you're actually doing and what it can see on the screen and what it thinks might be useful. Again, how that's all going to work in practice and how useful it really is, I don't know, but I thought that was really intriguing and a great idea in principle. So one of the problems with the new Copilot Plus PCs that's been noted across the board is that there are some popular x86 applications that you know just don't work under emulation at all and there's no native ARM version for them at this time. Now Microsoft has committed to saying that those major apps that people are complaining about, things like Google Drive, which is obviously something that many, many people use and that's a bit of a, a problem if the new devices don't support it, they are committing to saying there will be a version of Google Drive that natively works on these ARM devices in the coming you know, months. So if you're thinking about updating to one of these devices, but haven't been able to do it so far. Microsoft is promising to smooth the way. So they're mentioning things like Sketchbook Pro, Arc Browser, Google Drive, and also popular VPN clients, you know, ExpressVPN, Shark VPN. They're saying we're going to get, you know, versions of those working on Windows and ARM. So that's going to be great news if we can plug those holes in the application compatibility store. So I guess the next question is what? Well, when are you going to get 24H2? Well, you know, if you're an organization, it's available, I believe, to download 
now and you could go and test it if you want to do that. If you're just waiting for it to be rolled out automatically for you know to unmanage devices, the answer is you're not going to get this anytime soon. I guess because of the major architectural changes happening with this version of Windows and the long development process for it, Microsoft is taking a slowly, slowly approach. So at the moment, this is only going to be available to people through Windows Update who are opted in to receive early versions of Windows. And of course, that isn't most people. So I guess over the next couple of months, those are the people who are going to get this update automatically. And then Microsoft, as it always does, will move to the next phase and they will start to roll out this update to devices that they deem are compatible first. And, you know, once that's proven to be a success, they will extend the update to a wider range of hardware until they roll it out to everyone. But I suspect this is going to be a rather long process. And unless you've opted in for early updates, I wouldn't imagine you're likely to see this update coming to the device near you until either late this year or early 2025. But, you know, if you want to take the risk, you can always go and install it manually. Not something that I recommend. I would just wait for Microsoft to do its stuff because we're all aware probably this week there was a big problem with a preview update that blue screened a lot of Windows devices. So there's always a risk involved in this. Let me know what you think about some of the new features Microsoft is bringing to Copilot Plus devices. Do you think it's enough to make you want one of these things or maybe that your organization might invest in them? Let me know what you think in the comments below. I'd love to know. I'm going to leave another video on the screen for you now about the deprecation of Windows Server update services, which is something Microsoft announced a couple of weeks ago. We have a video on what that means for you. So do check that out. I'd really appreciate it if you found this video useful, if you gave it a thumbs up, because it really helps to get the video seen by more people on YouTube and grow the channel. But that's it from me for this week, and I'll see you next time.